Today we visit one of the most beautiful cities in the nation, Chicago. Its tall buildings nestled up against Lake Michigan stand majestically over a thriving metropolis that is nothing but fun. With 2.7 million people, this is the nation's third largest city. It has everything you could possibly want to do. It is big, it is scenic, and it is busy. Chicago is full of life, but it is very different from New York. It has a personality and a style all its own, and there is something for everyone. If you're visiting Chicago, particularly downtown Chicago, and you're looking for somewhere to go, just some place to hang out, you don't have a plan, this is the spot to be. Navy Pier, old Navy Pier. Now, I grew up in the city as a boy and used to come down here, and boy, has it changed since then. Today, Navy Pier is an entertainment venue with something for the whole family. It is a place where you could spend the day and not get bored. No matter if it is inside or outside, it is a cornucopia of tastes, sights, sounds, and nonstop action that will hold your attention. Navy Pier is the top attraction in the Midwest with over 8 million visitors a year. The one-time Naval Station was developed into this variety of mixed-use venues in 1990 and boasts a grand ballroom, convention space, shops, and venues, a pier park, and tour ships. It is an example of what can be done with a rundown facility that was falling apart and a commitment from government. What was the impetus that caused this to be turned into what it was? Well, you know, the pier was falling into disuse, and so um, the city and the state legislatures got together and thought, it's a great venue out in the lake and part of the city. We need to make it something, the people's pier. It's been here since 1916. People in the 1916, 1920s, they love the pier. The pier, that's when the pier was in its golden age and people came here for recreation. So our city and state leaders in the 1990s thought, let's bring it back to the people. Bring it back to the people, and that's exactly what they did. And as you see, here, here they come. Now, if you're coming to Chicago and you have young children, obviously you're going to be looking for things to do. And needless to say, there are lots and lots of things to do in Chicago. If you come down here to Navy Pier, you'll find there's something very unique. It is the Children's Museum. Inside, they have loads of things that you and your young kids can do together, and it's a fun place to visit. There is so much to do here, it almost makes you want to be a kid again. It's an indoor playground where you can do more than just slide and swing on things. There are no signs saying don't touch and no one tells you to keep your hands to yourself. Here, a kid can actually put his hands on stuff and not get in trouble. Um, the reaction is always good. Kids get so excited when they walk in the door, they can tell this is a place that's just for them. Um, the reaction on the way out the door sometimes isn't quite as good because we often have tears because they don't want to want to leave. But it's a great place where we really see them making connections. We can see that light bulb going on, whether they're doing something with science, literacy, arts, diversity, those are four key areas. Um, if they're making something or doing something for the first time, it's really exciting for them and exciting for the parents to see what kids have in them. It's a playground where you can let your imagination run wild. We have um, a wide variety of permanent and changing exhibits. Um, we have uh, an art studio, we have a changing exhibit gallery. Tomorrow we're opening two new exhibits. Miffy, um, who is a, a little bunny-like character um, who's in, been in many, many books. And Picnic in the Park, which is a place where kids can play at their, at their own little mini taste of Chicago. And then we have um, a climbing schooner where kids can climb up the rigging and climb through the ropes. We have a water exhibit. We have a building exhibit. We have a dinosaur dig. So there's lots and lots and lots for kids to do, as well as special exhibits for the younger children in the family, and lots of workshops and programs every day. So as awesome as Navy Pier is, there are plans in the future to make it bigger and better. So no matter when you come, you're bound to have a great experience. While Navy Pier is a playground of sights and sounds for kids and families, a 
we come back on the Inside Trip, we'll take a look at a part of Chicago that is strictly for adults. Nicole here again with another travel tip for you. The number one rule when packing is to remember to always pack light. Now I know you're going to bring your basic necessities like your toothbrush, toothpaste, and maybe even a blow dryer. But then there are the things that you're going to forget and when you forget, it's way too late. For example, for those of us who wear contacts, bring disposable contacts with a top quality solution. You never know when you're going to be in a country with very poor water. Then you wonder, what do I wear? What should I bring? Well, I'm going to tell you. Bring your basic black outfit. You can use this to mix and match with different shirts and pants to create an ensemble. Also, plan on for bad weather because it will hit. Happy traveling. If you're visiting Chicago, it's the end of the day and you don't want to sit in your hotel room, maybe you want to get out and have a drink or just be around people, then there's one section of the city that's an absolute must. It's here on Rush Street. Here you can see anybody, meet anybody, and if you don't want to do anything but just sit and hang out, that's an adventure unto itself. Rush Street is the happening place for the young adult and those who think like young adults say. It's the perfect people watching place. When you come to Chicago, visiting Rush Street is a tourist attraction all by itself. It is an area with lots of bars, a taste to fit everyone. And if you don't want to go to a bar, you can enjoy yourself just sitting on a bench and watching all that's going by. Here, enjoying happy hour is an art. And the best happy hour spot on Rush Street in Chicago is Tavern on Rush. I really like Tavern for happy hour. It's a good place. Especially when the sun's out, everyone's walking around, everyone's excited, happy, the weather's good. It's a very great place. Tavern on Rush looks like something out of a movie. It has low lighting and lots of people who look like they ought to be somebody or they're waiting for someone who is somebody to come by. And if they wait long enough, chances are they will. So um, you guys have been voted the best half yes. hour in all of Chicago. What's the attraction? Um, this is a place where you want to be seen and see a lot of people. It's always been that way. We get a lot of Chicago celebrities, a lot of personality celebrity uh, Chicago personalities that come in. Um, news, media, uh, sports players, our local teams, you know, the Bulls, uh, Cubs, Sox, Bears. We get uh, a lot of team uh, members. They all come in here and hang out, and people want to see that, and they want to see if they can spot anybody. Um, and it's a good, we have a nice bar. It's a nice big bar. There's a ton of room in here, and people have a good time. Now, they come um, the Rush Street area, for many, many years, it has had a certain kind of attraction. What do you think that is? What's this area like? It is full of personalities. You can see um, all different sorts of people here. Anybody, everybody comes down this way. Uh, and I think that's the attraction. There's, you can meet so many different people. Uh, there's lots of tourists, lots of locals. Um, you know, most of our business is, is locals, uh, regulars that live around here, have lived around here, grew up in this area, and um, like to come here and hang out. Tavern on Rush was voted the best happy hour in Chicago. It has everything you can imagine. It's great indoors with that slick big city bar feel. If you need some drinking and action, I am the girl. And it's great outside with the sidewalk cafe which is good for enjoying a meal, drinks, and what else. It's, it's the best spot in there, all the best shopping, 
It's a great place to sit outside, got great drinks, service is awesome. Lots of beautiful people. All of you are a great place. Calm and just to keep a watch, particularly if you're from our town. Because you know, from our town, you can just sit here, watch the world go by, and see Chicago at its best. It's, uh, it's a great people watching uh, establishment. The uh, drinks are awesome. The service is good. And the management uh, and owners are fantastic. They're very people oriented. They come out, they say hello, shake hands, occasionally buy a cocktail. It's just an incredible experience through and through. Just the best people watching in the city. It's the best place to be in Chicago on a beautiful sunny day like today. But sitting at a piano bar dressed up in the latest fashion is not all that Chicago has to offer for a good time. You can have just as good a time away from downtown in your jeans and sneakers. Chicago is famous for music, particularly the blues, and in some cases for jazz. But to be known as the best place in Chicago for live music, you have to go a long way. And that place is Shuba's. As sophisticated and cosmopolitan as Tavern on Rush is, Shuba's is the direct opposite. The atmosphere here is relaxed with that neighborhood bar feel. You can sit at the bar with your beer and chicken wings watching a sporting event, or you can eat in the dining room with a group of friends. But in either case, jeans and sneakers are the order of the day. Um, this was actually where we went for our first date. It was about 10 months ago, so this is the first time we've been back, so. Every 10 months. It's a neighborhood restaurant. Just, well, you yeah. know. That and there's a concert. <laughs> We're going to a concert yeah. and we want to go to a neighborhood restaurant. This is a great place to come. So. Well, for one thing, well, great food at the Harmony Grill ahead of time. Yeah. Small venue. And Mike Shuba is awesome because he lets under 21 kids come if they have a parent. Well, that's what we shoot for. We want it to be accessible for sure, but. Um, it's really, it's a lot of music fans, you know, I mean, since we have so many different types of music, um, it can bring in all sorts of people. I mean, I would say a lot of the people that come in here have never been here before, but we also have regulars that, you know, come here to the restaurant for, you know, the mac and cheese or whatever, or they know Shubas has good music, so they'll just show up and say, who's playing tonight? Let's check it out. And, um, so yeah, I guess the clientele is a good mix of neighborhood folks and people who come from, you know, all over the Midwest to see shows here. Vote at the best place in all of Chicago for live music. It's not about how you look or who's passing by or who's passing through here that matters. It's all about the entertainment. Um, it's a gr it's a great place for seeing a small, intimate, you know, venue show. Uh, really worthwhile for that. Uh, it's neighborhood is nice that it's within walking distance. You know, it's really easy to kind of walk here, go out to eat, go to a concert. You know, see a singer songwriter, small venue. It's fun. It's a great neighborhood place in Chicago. Because of our size, we have the opportunity to catch bands that are just big enough to have a buzz about them, so just big enough that, um, you know, a certain group of, like, sort of insider music people know that they're going to be big or that they're, you know, got potential to go somewhere, so they come here and a lot of times they will, unfortunately, immediately outgrow us, um, but a lot of times they'll stick with us and sometimes they'll just come and go, you know, who knows what happens to them, but uh, basically the guy that books our shows um, just has good relationships with a lot of agents and sort of has been doing it in a while and has a feel for... Uh, what people in the city like and what's you know what's happening and what's gonna what's gonna go somewhere. So when you come to Chicago it's easy to find good blues and find good jazz, but if you want the very best in live music, then you have to come to Shubas. Of course when you come to a place like Chicago, you definitely want to check out a great place to eat. When we come back on the inside trip, we'll take you to the absolute best Chicago has to offer.
Nicole here with your travel tip for today. Selecting the appropriate luggage doesn't mean buying that five-piece $99 deal. If you're in the market for new luggage, a garment bag is the perfect fit for a short business trip. Almost all airlines have small compartments with a hanging rod for the proper storage. I also strongly recommend a wheeled suitcase for those heavier items. Heavier items are easier to pull rather than lift. On a final note, no matter how big or small the bag actually is, never overpack, just prioritize. There are a few views of Lake Michigan that are as beautiful as the one seen from here at the restaurant Spiaggia, here at the beginning of the magnificent mile on Michigan Avenue in Chicago. The elegance of this place, you have to see it, it is beyond question. But it is the food that is made with tender loving care and real Italian authenticity. So what, what brings you to Chicago? Spiaggia is the dream of Chef Tony Mantuano and is about as authentic an Italian restaurant as you can get without actually being in Italy. Well, in 1984, there were a lot of Italian restaurants in America, uh, but they were serving a sort of an Italian-American cuisine, and those restaurants still exist today, and they're delicious, and they're a whole different genre and style. But what we do is we really try to directly import um, those, those authentic flavors. I mean, we, we knew that what was here was good, but we also knew that what we were tasting when we were traveling in Italy really didn't exist in America. So we wanted to, to, to give people an opportunity to try that food and try that style of Italian cooking. Spiaggia's has been voted as Chicago's best fine dining restaurant. In reality, it is two restaurants. There's the formal dining room and the cafe. When we arrived, it was in between the lunch hour and the dining hour, meaning the cafe was open and the dining room was being prepared. But being the gracious host that he is, Chef Montuana took us on a tour of his pride and joy. There is just a very casual cafe and adjacent to the dining room, it gives people like a second choice and a, uh, something to enjoy Spiaggia at a whole different level. Now when you are the best restaurant in Chicago and known all over the country, you can't help but want to show off a little bit. So we were lucky enough to have an authentic meal from Spiaggia's made just for us. All right, Meg is going to start by taking some asparagus spears that she has previously blanched and peeled. Puts them in a mixing bowl with some uh, uh, white asparagus, a little bit of Sicilian sea salt, some extra virgin olive oil, some fresh lemon juice, and mixes it all around. This is an asparagus puree that's take, take uh, blanched asparagus spears and puree it. So yeah, we have the blanched asparagus, both uh, white and green, and a little bit of asparagus puree underneath. Right, Meg? Right. <laughs> Lay down the larger green asparagus tips first. Follow it up with the baby white asparagus. So it's dressed with olive oil, lemon, Sicilian sea salt, and a little bit of asparagus puree. And then here she has some, um, what do you got there? Ricotta mousse. It's a ricotta cheese that's blended smooth with a little bit of, what else you put in there? And she's making what we call a canal. Places that right on top. A little bit of, of uh, freshly ground black pepper. She garnishes with a little bit of uh, lemon zest. And then just a little bit more extra virgin olive oil. And the final thing is a micro chive. 
from Chef's Garden in Ohio. And that is the asparagus antipasto. This is the real deal. Here, everything is authentic and cooked to perfection. And Chef Tony is an award-winning chef with his own cookbook and olive oil label. Um, my wife Kathy and I wrote this Piaggia cookbook about uh, a year and a half ago, and that cookbook was nominated for a James Beard Foundation for um, a cookbook award. Uh, I myself won the chef, uh, Best Chef Midwest uh, from the James Beard Foundation in 2005. <laughs> and um, Spiaggia is the only four-star, which uh, four-star Italian restaurant in Chicago, and we've received four stars from Chicago Magazine, Chicago Tribune. But it is not the awards that give Chef Tony his greatest satisfaction. It is the reaction of his customers. They are the real judges, whose opinions carry a lot of weight. It's a really, really, we love Chicago, we're from England. Uh, you know, this is one of the greatest spots I've ever been. When you come to restaurants Piaggia, you can't look like me. This is not a jeans and sneaker type restaurant. Instead, you have to wear a tie and a jacket. But then again, when you bring out your best girl or your best guy, don't you want to look your best? Thanks for your help. Hi, Nicole here with your travel tip for today. With so many great hotels for you to choose from, how can you be absolutely sure you pick the best one for an enjoyable vacation? Well first, never hesitate to ask for your family and friends' opinion. Also, you may want to compare the hotel's rates with the location. One hotel may be $20 more per night, but if it's within walking distance to your vacation attractions, you could save money by not having to rent a car. However, if you do need to rent a car, Book ahead of time and book online. Never walk in expecting a great deal. Enjoy your vacation. Chicago has many famous buildings and addresses, but there's one address that's strictly for the girls, both big girls and little girls. It's American Girl Place, Chicago. If you're coming to American Girl Place as a destination, be prepared for an event. This place is awesome, and it is a madhouse, but it is a madhouse of fun. Where else can you enter a real cafe and find dolls having lunch with their owners, complete with china, napkins, and tea sets, and real food for the live dolls who have fun make-believing they are feeding the play dolls. And to add to the fantasy, the American Girl characters come to life in their own theater. Imagine what it would be like to be riding a horse and you're suddenly caught in the storm with the wind blowing really hard and the rain blinding you. have to imagine that. The literature says American Girl's mission is to celebrate girls. American Girl embraces who they are today and looks forward to who they will become tomorrow. That's a tall order, but it appears American Girl has risen to the challenge. Oh, I just like them they're, because they're fun to play with. Because um, it's really fun to collect dolls and play with them. Yeah, and they're really fun to collect them and read the magazines and just doing stuff with them. The ones I like with the historical girls are when you buy a historical girl, you're getting a taste of what it might have been when they were around. On any given day, but especially on a weekend, there is a packed house. Big girls and little girls going wild over a line of dolls that feature a multitude of nationalities and historical periods. It is the ultimate world of make-believe. There's a beauty salon complete with hairstylists who will design a special hairstyle for your doll or style her hair to your exact specifications. There are accessories for many different time periods and settings. So many, in fact, that choosing becomes an adventure in itself. No, I'm getting that one. Okay. There's a lot going on here. This is more than a doll store with a gazillion accessories. It is a phenomenon similar to one usually associated with men and boys, baseball, and toy trains. 
There's a bonding here between mother and daughter, sister and sister, aunt and niece, and grandmother and granddaughter. Oh, I get excited just watching her play with the dolls. She turns 13 tomorrow, so it's really exciting for a 13-year-old to play with her dolls. But it's drawing us closer, even though we're close anyway. This is a, this is a regular part of our This is our life. This is a life experience for us. We are from three different states. She's from, we're sisters. She's from Florida. She lives in Georgia, and I live in Mississippi. And we have gotten our nieces together to take them to this uh, for their This is their eight birthday present. They had birthdays in April, May, and June, so we got them together to share their birthday gifts. Super. Isn't that fun? The American Girl line of dolls was introduced in 1986 as a series of historical characters to give girls an engaging glimpse of important times in America's past. Each character has her own story told in a series of books. The themes focus on family, school, holidays, birthdays, summer, and winter. Each doll has a complete line of accessories that match the stories in the books. And speaking of matching, you can have your doll made up to look just like you. This is a giant doll house with dolls and people living in a make-believe world. This day, it was a birthday party. And that meant party fun and events. So that's our tour of Chicago, and if this is your destination, be prepared to have lots of fun with great food at great attractions. So until the next time, I'm Stan Coleman, and I'll see you on the Inside Trip.